I designed this entire stream layout in under 90 minutes. We're talking laying out all the scenes, making the advanced motion transitions, the stinger transition, all the little widgets, even installing OBS itself and all the plugins I needed all within that time frame, and I wanted to show you how I did that. This was part of an event that I took part in recently, which featured eight creators slash educators slash plugin developers, some of which you guys probably know, and it was a lot of fun. It challenged me to create some things in OBS that I've never done before, never even shown it off in a YouTube video. There's a lot of really cool, intricate details in this design, which I'm really proud of, like this little widget that shows the box art for the game I'm currently playing, and then it even updates in real time as you change categories on Twitch. Also, these advanced motion slide over transitions, or these stinger transitions, where my cameras slide in from the left and the right, but like, on a slight delay, I think it looks really sleek. I'm really happy with how this turned out. And I just felt like glazing myself for like the next 10 minutes. If you guys wanna see the full uncut version so you can see every little click in detail and then plagiarize my hard work, asshole. I've uploaded that so you can check that out up here. Big shout out to VIP SCD Keys for making these videos possible. If you just set up a new PC and you wanna save a little bit of money, you can get 30% off a Windows 11 license, bringing down the price to as low as $21. Make sure to use the code NUTTY at checkout to get it for that price. And if that's still too much money for you, you can get a Windows 10 key for $15 and then you can just upgrade that to Windows 11 for free. Make sure you use a secure payment method at checkout like PayPal. They'll send you over an activation code. You can put that into your Windows settings and then you get rid of your Windows watermark because you, that's embarrassing to show that on stream. So don't do that. Check out VIP SCD keys in the link down below and thanks again for sponsoring the video. So before I started making my design, of course I needed to install OBS, which you think would be a straightforward process, but there's one thing I always do every time I install a fresh version of OBS, and that is to put it in portable mode. If you go into your OBS folder and you put in an empty text file named OBS portable mode.txt, it will tell OBS to save all of your scenes and all your settings into one folder so that if you ever need to back up your OBS setup, you just need to back up one folder. I have a whole video, by the way, on backing up your OBS settings. So if you've ever had OBS delete all your scenes and then try to ruin your life, um, yeah, go watch that video. Next, I went ahead and installed a few OBS plugins. And the fastest way to do that is to use the stream up plug installer. Again, I did a whole video on that as well, but this makes it way faster and easier to get all the plugins that you need. You literally just click all the plugins that you want, click one button, and then you're done. It's super easy. And you can update all your plugins too with just one click, which is nice. So with everything downloaded and ready to go, I then have to decide what scenes are most important for a Twitch stream. Obviously, you got to have a starting soon screen. Unless you're one of those cringe people on Twitter that keeps tweeting out how starting soon screens are useless, nutty. Like, we get it. Stop tweeting it out like you're not the thousandth person to have that opinion. I wanted my starting soon screen to be a little bit of a preview of what I'm about to stream. So I added my keyboard cam and my gameplay in a sort of angled split layout. And you can make those angled cuts completely within OBS. You don't need to use Photoshop or anything like that. You can use the advanced mask plugin, select the gradient option and set a rotation to split your camera down the middle. Then I added a drop shadow using the stroke shadow glow plugin to give it a sort of 3d look i also added the composite blur filter to create this sort of frosted glass effect all these plugins by the way are mentioned in this video so if you haven't watched my channel before hello i'm not good at talking to new people the left side i just filled with a bunch of text labels like adding my socials i also created this little easter egg text underneath the starting soon label so you know how in the sims they have those funny loading screen messages i wanted to recreate that sort of thing it's just a normal text label that you can add in obs but there's a really neat feature with the obs move plugin that allows you to animate text labels but in a sort of typewriter type of thing. And I just added a few different joke messages that I have rotating every few seconds. So like the few people that come in at the start of the stream can be like, ha ha ha, you know? Anyway, underneath that, I thought I'd use that extra space to show what game I'm about to play that stream. So the cool thing is the text and the box art, those actually update automatically whenever I change categories in my Twitch dashboard. So 
It's a, uh, it's pretty much set and forget. I never have to like think about updating OBS. Just when I update my title, it updates the box art for me. And the way it works is that text label is just a normal text label in OBS. And that box art is actually a browser source. And then I added a trigger inside of StreamerBot that says anytime I change categories on Twitch, grab the URL for the box art and shove that into the browser source in OBS. And you can see how that's done here. In StreamerBot, you just create a new action. And then in the trigger section, you add a stream update trigger. Then in the sub actions, you have one line to set the text label to this variable and then another sub action to set the browser source to this URL. Then as long as StreamerBot is open, whenever you change titles on Twitch, automatically updates your graphic overlay. You don't have to do anything else after that. Next, I moved on to the just chatting scene, which is a scene that has my webcam. That's it, okay, moving on. Of course, you also need a scene to show your gameplay, but before that, I wanted to create this intermediate lobby scene, or I guess you guys call it an intermission scene. So if you're just sitting in the lobby waiting for a new game to start, I like to make my camera nice and big. It sort of makes it more personal and gives your viewers something different to look at, like to stimulate their ADHD riddled brains. And I wanted to keep that angular theme going on from the starting soon screen. So I positioned my camera on the left, but with this kind of angle slice going down the middle, same way that we did for the starting soon screen. And then I put a small preview of the gameplay on the bottom right and had it peeking behind the camera. And then with the remaining space, I put my keyboard cam. And I really like this layout. It's pretty unique, almost comic book style. Now here's where it gets interesting. I wanted to do something extra special with those scene transitions. So I tried to do this sort of slide reveal transition, which is really easy to do with the OBS Move plugin. I'm sure you guys all know how to do that. The hard part was getting that angled cut to animate in. And that's actually quite involved. So essentially, there are these filters you can set up in OBS to animate that advanced mask filter, that filter that we added earlier. And I showed you how to do that in episode three of the Move Plugin Masterclass, which again, you can watch up here. All the videos are just gonna be in the description, okay? Just go watch them. I'll have to cover that in episode four of the Move Plugin Masterclass because just animating in that angled cut is quite a few more steps than just doing the normal move transitions, which you've seen like a billion times before. Before I work in the gameplay scene, I wanted to add another type of transition called a stinger transition. Now, I'm sure you all know what a stinger transition is because uh, people sell them all over like Fiverr and stuff. You probably have one set up for your stream. It's basically a video that plays between scene transitions. The problem is one, I suck at motion graphics and two, they take up a lot of resources. So to get around that, I use something called a browser transition. And I bet you haven't heard of those before. Basically, instead of using a video file for the transition, it uses a web page for the transition. And the cool thing is, Nerd or Die has a browser transition maker where you can just put in the colors that you want and then it just makes a transition for you. It's a completely free tool. But they're not sponsoring this video. I don't think they've sponsored my videos for like over a year now, but it's a really easy and simple way to create clean browser transitions without having any knowledge of motion graphics or coding. And it took me like three seconds to make a stinger transition. So I'll leave a link down below if you want to go ahead and make your own browser based transitions. But now we'll finally move on to our gameplay scene. And I wanted to keep everything super clean and minimal. So I don't want to do too much here. I just added my face cam and keyboard cam. And then I used the advanced mask plugin to add in rounded corners and a simple outline. But again, I wanted to do something extra special with those transitions. As you guys can probably tell, I really love transitions. I don't think your viewers actually give a shit but I care, so we're gonna do that. So for this, I didn't want my webcam and keyboard cam to just appear after the transition because that's really boring. So in OBS, you can set up these things called show and hide transitions. So you know when you click in the little eye icon next to each of your sources, it doesn't just have to turn on and off, you can actually set it to do like a transition. And in this case, I set both of the cameras to do these slide transitions so that when I click them on and off, 
they don't just appear and disappear, they actually slide on and off the screen. I then did even more move plugin trickery to turn on and off my cameras during the scene transition. So when I do the stinger transition, my cameras are initially not on screen and then after a second, they turn on, thus sliding back on screen. There's a setting with the move plugin that allows you to change the visibility of a source at the end or start of a movement. And then you can trigger that movement on a scene transition. It sounds very complicated, I get it. Nobody understood what I just said just then. So I'll, I'll have to cover that in episode four of the Move Plugin Masterclass. Finally, I had a little bit more time left and I decided to use the remainder of that 90 minutes creating a very simple sub alert. And for this, I could have used something like stream elements, but a lot of people seem to be moving away from online alert platforms like Stream Elements and Streamlabs in favor of solutions that work locally on your computer. And since I was already using StreamerBot for that little box art widget, I just went ahead and used that to make my sub alerts. It's definitely not as straightforward as Stream Elements, but you can create a widget for pretty much anything you can think of. It's very flexible. But to keep it simple, I just created a basic text label in OBS and then I created an action in StreamerBot that simply changes the text label and then added a trigger to trigger that change whenever I get a sub. It's the same concept as that little box art widget. So if you understood how that works, this should be pretty easy for you. I also added a slide animation using the OBS Move plugin and then hid the text label underneath the keyboard cam so that when I get a new sub, it slides in from underneath the keyboard cam. I should probably do a dedicated video on making custom widgets with StreamerBot because although it's nowhere near as easy to use as Stream Elements or Streamlabs, you can make widgets for everything. And no, you don't need to know how to code either. You just need to know where to click and where to drag stuff around. So uh, let me know if you want me to make a video on that. But uh, yeah, this is the final design that I came up with. And I think it looks pretty great for something that I made in just 90 minutes. Not to suck my own dick, even though we all know that I would if I was flexible enough, but I think this looks better than like 99% of streamers. If I was a brand new streamer and this was what my first stream looked like, I think it would impress a lot of people. If you want to see the full uncut version of the 90 minute challenge, you can check it out up here. And if you want to know what OBS plugins you should be checking out, I have another video on that, which you can check out over here. See ya, bitch. Uh, 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 Mitch, Mitchell, see ya later, Mitchell.